Hello? Mum? It's eight o'clock in the morning, you just dragged me out of the shower. No, I'm not dry, and I thought it was an emergency the amount of time you left it ringing for. Mum, listen. Mum! I'm freezing cold here, I'm just gonna dry myself and I'm off to work, so don't ring again, all right? Ever. Four o'clock in the morning! I'm really sorry, Benice. I was out with some mates in Leeds and I had too much to drink. Oh, well, you don't need to tell me that. I thought you were demolishing the place, the amount of banging and crashing that was going on. Yeah, well, I tripped on the landing. If you ask me, dance hall shouldn't be going on till past midnight any road. As I recall, Betty, nobody did ask you. Now, ladies, please, and no forgetting under the seats like you did yesterday. I guess more like working for headmistress every day in here. In case you've forgotten, I've just had a baby and we're both staying here. And she'd been asleep for three hours without waking until you rolled in. Benice, can you please stop shouting? I've got a really bad head. You'll have more than a bad head if you wake up my baby again. Whatever's going on in here? Oh, madam here rolled in at four o'clock this morning. Ah, you know. Only wish I could have joined you. Mother, the baby was up half the night. Yes, well, I'm sure once she's settled into a better routine, things will calm down. Are you implying that my routine isn't as good as it could be? I'm not implying anything. Only that crying in the night's to be expected with a baby. And when you've got a party animal living under the same roof. The big giraffe said. Morning. Hiya. How was last night? It was fine. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, no reason. Except you got in dead early. Oh, Jess, it's my first day in a new job. I could hardly go out and get wrecked, could I? And my mates had to be up early and all. Yeah, of course. First day at the factory. Yeah, you'll have a laugh. Working for Pollard. You're joking, aren't you? Yeah, but Bob's a good bloke. Doesn't seem like a whip wielder to me. I suppose. God, he's growing, isn't he? <laughs> I never thought I could feel this way about a baby, especially someone else's. I know I say it loads, but I really appreciate everything you've done for us both, Jace. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> oh, well, Miss Godfather. <laughs> Wouldn't be doing my job right if I was leaving you to get on with it on your own, son. <laughs> right, bye, sweetheart. Wish me luck. No, you don't need it. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, but can you make sure you're back before six, cos I've got to do a shift at the Woolly? I'll be here. All right. Right then, my raison d'etre, the factory awaits. you never guess what it says here, Bob. Harry Partridge is retiring come the next election due to ill health. What, the local MP? Yeah. So? Well, this could be the chance I've been waiting for. You've been saying it for ages, haven't you, Emily? What's that, Mrs Orr? What a great politician I'd make. Oh, yes, uh, well, in some respects, yes. So, are you saying you consider standing for local MP? Yes. Why not? I was very nearly councillor. It's just the next step up. I've watched that Anne Widdicombe and she's never said anything I couldn't say better myself. But the next election isn't for another four years yet. So, it just give me time to prepare my campaign. Oh, Bob, this is my big chance. Hiya. All right. It's, um, first day at the factory today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you said. Do you fancy meeting up again sometime? Yeah, I could do. I shouldn't really, but so long as no-one finds out. Yeah, well, it's your choice. See you later. Morning, Letitia. May I offer you a lift to the factory, since it's your first day? Oh, go on, then. Looking forward to joining the team. Can't wait. Of course you can't. Hey, and we have got some top tunes for you to hum along to whilst you work. That's down to me and my compilation tapes, that. Yeah? Yeah, fan of 70s classics, are you? Chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap and the like. You what? All will be revealed. Au revoir, mon sweet. That Margaret Thatcher, she started off in a greengrocer's shop, didn't she? I bet you're really suffering with this lot. Oh, it's like my worst nightmare. <laughs> right, now, these all need to go round and down in the cellar, love. Right, love. What the hell's going on in here? We're in the middle of a delivery. What does it look like? Well, can you keep the noise down? It's bottles and crates. What do you think? There's a baby woken up again. Are you taking the mic? No, I was just asking. What with you being so pent up? I'm pent up because it's like living in a city centre round here just lately. Uh, Benice, maybe all those months living in the vicarage have played havoc with your memory, but pubs are noisy. But the baby, Mum, she keeps crying. I'm so tired. 
And then I can't sleep either because I seem to hear every little noise, like it's magnified. This is all perfectly normal, pet. It's a strain having a baby in the first few months. Why don't we get the health visitor to come in a few days early, eh? You. Well, who else round here would suit the title MP? What's that stand for? Muck peddler? <laughs> ha ha, I'll have you know. I've often been praised for the boldness of my views. Who buy? Ghost to Mussolini. <laughs> you buying that or not? Eh? Oh, I'm not sure. There's not a lot in it, Marlon. We're looking to rent a flat. And I'm looking to live on more than bread and dripping. Hand your money over. It's not a library. You could always check the adverts in our window. No, all you've got is a couple offering music lessons and a French polisher. Just hope we can find somewhere affordable. I said we can find anywhere at all. Mm. Huh? How are you, Ashley? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Don't look that way to me. I'm fine, really. Mm. I could bring you a pint out if that's what you're after. But it'd probably freeze over. Just wondering how Benice is getting on. And Gabrielle. Gabrielle, is it? Well, you picked a name. Fancy me finding out before Betty. No, 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 no. It, it, it's not official. It, it, it's just my name for a, a secret one. Oh, I see. Apparently she smiled for the first time the other day. Maybe it was just wind, but still, I wasn't there. And I can't be there. Not to see each special first. Sounds to me like you'd get out to be with her as much as possible, but that's not easy with you and Bernice. I really wasn't expecting the baby to be mine, Seth. Now that she is... But now that she is... You feel you've got to keep out of the way, so you don't put pressure on Benice. What if I were to drop Charlie off and we go and sit at end at bar? I'll bet Benice would invite you through. Thank you, but I just feel in the way whenever I'm there. But she's your little and all, Ashley. You made her just as much as Benice did, even if you don't feel like it. Deep down, Benish knows that. And he's checking to see if he's got email every five minutes. I've told him we only get a postal delivery once a day. Well, twice at best. But does he listen? Now, is your uh, mother saying to little and round? Yeah, she thought it'd do me good to be out front for a bit. Oh, yeah, well, I'm she's right. I mean, who the heck is going to be transmitting messages over the interweb to Seth any road? Oh, it's blooming expensive round here, isn't it? Is it? For all house, I'll say. <laughs> me and Marlon's been scanning the paper. Well... It's like I've always told you, Tricia. Got to learn to live within your means. Well, if I live within my means, all I'd have is a room. <laughs> well, perhaps you should have studied harder at school. Eh? Hey? If you'd wanted to guarantee sufficient savings for a home of your own. Very useful thing to have, qualifications. Mm. Although it doesn't always follow. No. Many a time I've met a rich man who's been as thick as two short blanks. Not that I'm saying that's what you are. No, oh, maybe you're right. And me and Marlon are never going to get any money behind us with the dead end jobs we're stuck in. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Rum and coke, please. Shame about his ill health, isn't it? Mind you, it's about time we had fresh political blood round here. Thank you, Jeremy Paxman. You may mock, but pretty soon you'll be treating me a bit more seriously. I'm joining the race come the next election. To becoming an MP? <laughs> you wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> the voice of reason may have been defeated at the local election, but she learnt by her mistakes. You'll see. Anyway, you thinking of standing? None of your business. And anyway, even if I were, I wouldn't be worried about having you as an opponent. Never heard anything so ridiculous. <laughs> Then is it, Bob? Welcome the Tisha on board. I'm buying her one, and that's it. Oh, typical. Ah, oh, Letitia. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm on there to show you what's what this morning, but don't you worry, love. I shall be there to give you the benefit of my experience all afternoon. Right. Hiya. 
How's it going? Oh, all right. Oh, it's more than all right. She's a dead fast worker. You can say that again. She's a proper little dynamo. <laughs> you see? And uh, how's it going over the road with Jason? Mum, will you stop checking up on me? The job's fine and I'm fine, all right? Well, they're asking. Hello, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm here to see Bernice, actually. Oh. Hello, Bernice. Hi. Um, my mum's looking after the baby. She's just giving me a break. Do you want to come through? Oh, why do I feel so bad? I used to get over hangovers really fast. Three little letters, love. A, G and E. Oh, hello. Afternoon. Louise, would you mind finishing your break elsewhere, please? Only the health visitor's here and... Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks for coming at such short notice. It's just that, um... We've had a few problems, haven't we, Bernice? Yeah. It's been really difficult getting her to sleep and to stay asleep. No, don't worry. I'm sure everything's just fine. I'll start by examining her, though, first. That's OK with you? Yeah, sure. Right, then. Hello. I'll just go through there if you need me. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's not often you grace us with your presence, Eric. Unless, of course, you're seeking favours. Well, it uh, cuts both ways, Chris. As you know, my position on the council hasn't exactly done you uh, any harm. On the contrary, there are some people that say that I might have even saved your business bacon on the odd occasion, eh? <laughs> some might. Well, what's the reason for this visit? You may have read in The Courier, Harry Partridge is planning on retiring before the next election. I'm considering standing in his place. Ah, so we're fed up of playing with little fish on the council, then. <laughs> but obviously, to be successful, I need the backing of local businessmen. Yeah, I know it's a long way away, but... Um, well, I thought I'd sign you out, check that you're still aware of what we can do for each other. You know what I mean? Am I supporting your campaign? That would entitle me to certain privileges. Well, you know I'm not a... Averse to it'll surreptitious back scratching. Hmm. Sounds interesting. She's got a very slight cold. Oh. But that's okay. It's nothing serious. However, it would help if you could keep her out of smoky atmospheres. And perhaps if she can't sleep, try a quieter spot. Right. Oh, there you are. Be looking at Listen, do you want me to do two puddings for tonight or just one? Marlon. Hmm? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Diana. <laughs> non stop in here. Yes. I can just see myself in them houses of Parliament. The Right Honourable Vivian Ope. A lot of politicians write books on the side too, don't they? Oh, yes. I could become a cabinet minister and a literary lioness. Mm. Then again, you could just stick to what you're good at. You know, Sir Chloe, I reckon that if I can get someone behind me on council, could easily nab the contract off him. Just like that? Yeah. And what's more, I'm learning pretty fast. Because you've got to play dirty to get anywhere in big business. Shouldn't need to play dirty with the council, though, should you? You're joking, aren't you? Know any councillors, do you? Um, oh, come on, you know one at least. Eric Pollard. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, luckily for me, he's corrupt to the core. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks for coming. Well, she doesn't think the pub's a very good place for the baby to be. She's got a bit of a cold at the moment, and what with the smoke and the noise. I'll have to go and tell Ashley, it's only right. You were brought up in this sort of environment. You did OK. Yeah, well, I want to do as I'm advised. Well, maybe we could make the place non-smoke and temporarily like. No, no, it's no good. I'll just have to keep her upstairs, away from the bar. Aye. Anyway, I'm off home now to myself and his blasted computer. Ah, well, at least he's not hogging the telly, Betty. No, it's not right, though, is it, love, eh? For a grown man to be sat tapping away at his interface night after night. Oh, mystery to me, the World Wide Web. Mm. <gasps> and me, I'm thankful to say. Well, there's millions like my set, you know. Oh, why is it? They're like flies, just 
just sat exploring the web <laughs> without a worry in the world. But where there's a web, there's always a whopping great spider waiting to pounce. No, you mark my words, love. Social intercourse will be a thing of the past. <sighs> well, I'll see you, love. See you, love. <laughs> Enjoy your first day, did you? Yeah, it was uh, OK. Hey, helps to have some music tap along to, doesn't it, eh? It's not really my sort of thing, that. What, back-to-back backer, eh? Boney M? It, the work's a genius. Well, I've only ever heard of one karaoke. Well, thank your lucky stars, cos from now on you can hear the originals every day. You know, it was a sad day when the Rivers of Babylon Quartet stopped topping the pops. Beginning of the end. See you tomorrow. Evening. Good day at work. Have you been waiting for me? Oh, of course not. I'm just on my way home. Oh, right, of course. Well then, good day. No, that's boring. I don't suppose you've got time for a quick chat. Ah, I might have. Upstairs. No, actually, no, I should go home. Oh, well, your idea. Maybe you uh, should get off. Wouldn't want anyone to spot us now, would we? Go on, then. Only for a minute. This is an unexpected surprise. Well, I thought it'd be nice to get out of the pub for a bit. It's a relief, actually. Yes, it must be rather difficult to get any privacy. Hello. It's like living in Piccadilly Circus over there. I hadn't realised it before. It's yeah. manic. Well, um, why don't you go through and put your feet up for a bit? I doubt anyone will disturb me for the rest of the day. Oh, thanks. So, is everything all right with uh, the baby? Um, well, her health visitor called round and she's got a cold, but that's all. Is it bad? It's just a sniffle. What do you mean, just a sniffle? She must have said something more than that. Denise, tell me. Ashley, I'm not hiding anything from you. She's got a slight cold, nothing to worry about. End of story. Don't you trust me? She phoned you at work? Yes, about an hour ago. How did she sound? Fine. She said she was ill, but she didn't sound it. Knew it. She's cried wolf that many times before. I can't believe I started to fall for it. She wasn't very nice. How do you mean? I'd rather not repeat it. I don't want to make you angry. She doesn't like me. She made that very clear. <sighs> really started to feel guilty earlier. Zoe spoke to her and said she had chest pains. And I thought, well, what if she has, you know? She's mad. I don't believe this. Do you think you should answer it? No. No, I don't. I've got a better idea. Let's spend the evening down the pub. Right then. Straight away. Bernice, please, I'm sorry. I really wasn't having a go at you. You don't trust me. It's obvious. Oh, that's not true. But it's very difficult not being there to hear these things for myself. I worry about it. Imagine how you'd feel if everything was relayed to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Ashley. I know it's hard for you. I didn't mean to get angry. I'm just defensive because it's starting to feel as though people don't think I'm doing the best for my baby. <sighs> of course you are. Not according to the health visitor. And she's right. The back room of a pub's hardly ideal for her, is it? No, I suppose not. And in the evenings, it just gets even noisier. I failed, haven't I? As usual. You know, there's always here. There are plenty of bedrooms too, so if you both wanted to come and live away from the pub. What can I get you, Beth? Oh, smell insults, I think. What the heck are you doing here? I do like the hot pint. Oh, aye. But sat in front of that flaming computer screen these days, what's up? Have we had a power cut on our side at road? I've done enough browsing for today, so I'm giving me wrist to rest. I beg your pardon? It's repetitive strain injury, Betty. <laughs> oh, I've been looking for you. Really? Should have been at home then, shouldn't you? I've been visiting your better half. Oh, yeah, what for? Only we come as a team now, me and my better half. I'm planning to stand as our MP at the next election. I see. And you want Chris to vote for you? Yeah. Well, you best please me and all then, aren't you? 
Now, what could you possibly want from me? Well, you're on the council, aren't you? There's things I'm trying to set up for Chris. Business deals. I don't think so. Oh, of course, these political careers can finish before the candidates so much as begun campaigning. Bits of the past get out. Remember when you hired me to bribe Councillor Eccleston? Are you threatening me? Of course I'm not. But I tell you what, I won't say no to a business lunch. In here, tomorrow, shall we say? See you then. Hmm. No later than six, I said. I know, I'm sorry. I've got to go to work. You kept us late. You could have rung me. I'm sorry. Right, well, I'll see you later then. I'm very lucky not to have been sacked, you know. It won't happen again, Jess, I promise. We'll just make sure it doesn't. I feel awful now. Look, it's OK, but I've got to work too, all right? I'll see you later. Bye, Kirk. It was just a suggestion. Look, I don't You think don't it's... have to say anything. It's OK. Look, I don't think it'd work out, us living together after everything that's happened. Why not? We managed at New Year. And you know how much you both benefited from it. It's got to be worth a go. If the pub's proving stressful... It's very hard, Bernice, not being there to help with it. Very hard indeed. And it would take the pressure off you if I could be a full-time parent too. You've thought this through, haven't you? No. But it's an obvious and practical thing for us to do. I wouldn't get in your way, Bernice. I'd give you as much privacy as you need. Surely you can see how it would benefit all of us. Well, it would be a lot quieter. It wouldn't even have to be permanent. But for now, whilst things are getting you down... OK, then. At least until she's got rid of her cold. <laughs> 